Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I want to share with you my five favorite Canon camera hacks that are going to make your life so much easier. If you do enjoy our channel, please don't forget to subscribe, just press the bell button down below and you'll always get notified whenever there's new videos coming out. So when you get your camera fresh from the store and you unbox it, there's a few settings that make your life a little bit difficult when it comes to wildlife photography. So here are my five favorite camera hacks that are going to make your life out in the field a lot easier. Number one is your set button. According to factory settings, your set button is turned off and often doesn't do much. Some people put the magnification on it, but quite frankly, we have a designated button for that and we're normally not in a huge hurry to magnify our images. There's two settings we can place on the set button that will actually make a huge difference time-wise when it comes to wildlife photography. The set button is such a useful button because as we grab our camera, our thumb falls down there very, very easily. If you are one of the photographers that enjoys back button focus, I must admit your thumb becomes quite busy, but that's why we are born with a thumb. So there's two options for your set button. Number one, if you shoot like most of the pangolin crew on manual with an automatic ISO, it becomes difficult to adjust your exposure. And the reason for that is that our wheel here in the back is occupied with changing our aperture and our adjustment wheel on the top is occupied with changing our shutter speed. Therefore, there is no dial left anymore in order to adjust our exposure compensation. We would naturally have to go into our quick menu by pressing Q, dial up and therefore change our exposure. Quite frankly, that takes too long. In wildlife photography, we must be able to change our exposure while looking through the viewfinder. And therefore, it would be handy to adjust our set button. Any custom control adjustments can be made in the quick menu under the camera icon down here. Alternatively, you will find it under our menu in our orange setting in the 1DX Mark II, it would be under the sixth chapter. A little note on the side, very, very easy. If you want to navigate your menu swiftly, you can jump through chapters simply by pressing the Q button without having to scroll through every sub chapter individually. That's quite handy to know. So let's go back to our set button. We enter custom controls and you'll see we have a little diagram of our Canon camera, whatever model you might have, and every single button will be highlighted. And every newer camera model from Canon will have the option to adjust the set button. We're going to scroll to the right hand side with the dial by your thumb. There's the set button and you can choose the plus and minus sign. The first model that was able to shoot on an automatic ISO with your manual setting and still adjust the exposure was the 1DX Mark I. If you own one of the very first models, you might have to download a software update and install it through the CF card slot on our right hand side in order to have the option available to choose to adjust your exposure compensation. Once we chose that, the option is available to press the set button now and use the adjustment dial on the top in order to adjust your exposure swiftly and quickly. If you do prefer to shoot aperture priority, this is a waste of space because we can change our exposure compensation simply by using the bottom dial. Then we can program the set button a lot more useful. For instance, by choosing to change the ISO. Currently, we can only change the ISO quickly by finding one of the small buttons on the top right hand corner, pressing that, and then adjusting our ISO. 
If we go into the ISO menu, we cannot see what effect the ISO has currently on our shutter. And in wildlife photography, that is the only reason we change our ISO, to achieve a different shutter speed in aperture priority. If I go through the quick menu in order to change my ISO, I run into the same problem. I don't know what effect the ISO has on my shutter, so I'm gonna to have to guess how high to bring my ISO in order to receive a desired shutter speed. If we now program our set button to take over the function of changing our ISO, we circumvent that problem. Now we can easily adjust the ISO while looking through the viewfinder by pressing the set button and using the top dial and you will see the immediate effect on your shutter speed. For wildlife photography that is absolutely crucial, both the gain speed as well as the immediate feedback from your information. Number two is the joystick. When we get our camera brand new, that joystick is actually deactivated. And as you know, in wildlife photography, we often shoot AI servo to be able to track our subject. And for that reason, we have to shift that focus point a lot in order to compose our image. We're gonna lose a lot of time if we can't access our joystick immediately. When you unbox your camera, your joystick is not immediately active through your viewfinder. You will always have to press the button on the top right hand corner first to activate your focus window and be able to choose a certain location for your focus point. If you do shoot wildlife photography a lot, you're gonna have to shift your focus point because we often shoot on AI servers. To have to press an extra button before shifting it is a major time loss. So all we're going to need to do is go into our custom controls, go to the joystick sign and select the function to assign. That will activate your joystick and now you can immediately shift your focus point around whenever you are busy focusing. My third camera hack for Canon is to reassign the star button. For all of the photographers out there shooting on back button focus, you probably have come across the problem where you activated the star button by accident and locked on exposure that you never intended on and suddenly your image is all out of whack. You're either completely overexposed or underexposed and you have no idea what actually went wrong until you see that little star sign flashing in your viewfinder. The best way is actually to turn that button off or to reprogram it. So the easiest thing to deal with the star button if you do not use your exposure lock frequently is to go to your star button and simply go from the star to AF off. Alternatively, you can reassign it to another option. However, you must be aware that you might be touching any other option by accident as well. So for me, the only other option that makes sense is to also assign it for metering and autofocus. In my case, I chose a custom design where you can tick whatever you would like to be activating with the star button and I have an autofocus area selection of nine focus points. So in my case I can focus on a single focus point with the AF on button and on nine focus points with the star button. If that is not an option simply have both buttons activated as focus buttons and you will never run into the problem of locking your exposure by accident. My fourth Canon camera hack is my highlight tone priority. Number four is a quick one, but so helpful. Highlight tone priority you find in the menu, under your red menu, and it is usually turned off. It is something I've only learned recently about and it's really handy to enable it 
it will show with a little D plus sign so that your ISO indicates the D plus below. All it does is that it gives you a wider range of tones in your highlights so that you do not burn your images so quickly. Or let me put it that way, if you happen to burn them, you have a bigger chance of retrieving your highlights and getting information out of them. It is a really useful function to have activated. Last but not least, I would like to talk to you about your autofocus tracking and sensitivity. My fifth and last camera hack for today has to do with our focusing system. If you can adjust your tracking sensitivity as well as your acceleration and deceleration for tracking, you can make a huge difference to your bird and flight photography. Many of my clients ask me about the option under your autofocus chapter to choose different cases. And you might have noticed that all these cases are specifically laid out for sports scenarios. And it becomes quite difficult to apply them to your specific wildlife scenario in that moment. It doesn't always make sense. So rather than using these presets that are already adjusted, you might notice that I have little gray arrow marks sitting above that are currently overriding my case. So what you can do with most Canon cameras, even if you don't have the autofocus chapter available, is to program those in your green custom menu. You will see I have a tracking sensitivity in acceleration deceleration tracking configured here. If you would like to add these two items, you go to configure, select items to register and go through your menu until you find the relevant menu points. So once you have these two points registered under your green setting, you can quickly and easily adjust them and it will override any other case. In my case, I like to have my tracking sensitivity locked on and my acceleration and deceleration tracking all the way on plus two. That is my standard outcome and what it does is that once my focus locked onto a subject it becomes more sticky, it becomes more locked on, it will not easily slide off. So if a bird is swaying in the wind on a reed for instance and my focus point slightly slides off to the left and right it will not start searching for the focus but rather stay focused on the given bird. With acceleration deceleration tracking, I would like it to be nice and speedy because we're working with wildlife that moves fast. Even though this is my base settings, I often come to adjust it because a locked on tracking sensitivity means that our camera takes a moment longer to focus on something new as well. So if you're in scenarios where you quickly need to pick up subjects, and it is all about speed, you might want to find a more medium way or you want to even make it very responsive, but then you must be aware that you lose your subject as quickly as what you found it. If you really struggle with birds in flight, this might be the menu point that you want to play with in order to improve your focusing abilities. These were my five favorite Canon camera hacks. I really hope they might help you with the practical handling of your camera in the field and taking photographs. If you did like them, please don't forget to like the video down below. And if you have camera hacks of your own that I didn't mention here, or questions with regards to the hacks that I showed you, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your ideas and come back to you as quickly as possible. Have a great day.